And you yep. said it was a yep. cheap one. And I said it was a cheap one. Mate. Well he's done, like, that's fucking he's, impressive. He's teaching us lessons. The world is upside down and pigs are flying. Things, something's <laughs> gone wrong here at this channel. <laughs>
Moving on to the second bracket, wine number one. A little bit more simple, to be honest. Uh, this isn't really uh, giving much, it's quite muted. There's like whiffs of raspberry and sour cherry and stuff. You know, that's about it. Look really similar. Maybe this one's a little bit browner, but yeah, very, very similar, very different shades. Uh, the sort of theme between these wines, they're medium weight. They've got this bright, fresh fruit primary characteristic on the nose and then, oh yeah. Oh, I really like that one. Oh yeah. I'll be honest guys, there's not a hell of a lot there that is like, it's got the all the indicators of what the variety is, not really indicators of where it's coming from. It's, it's kind of like kind of blocky, it's concertinaed in, but not coiled and tensioned in like a precise way. It's more just, it's like over yelling <laughs> at you, kind of like so loud, it's distorted and you can't really understand what the hell's going on and. Oi, Australians, you like Shiraz? Well, here's a Shiraz that'll knock your socks off. It's called Magic 38. It's a Shiraz that your dad would hate. It's nice and light, it's juicy, there's no oak, it's nice and low alcohol. That I don't know what my voice is turned into here, but this is a wine that I made uh, last year. Uh, it's inspired by Tava Rosé, it's built for chilling, it's really good fun. It's $38, the magic number for those passionate followers of the show. Uh, we only made 70 cases and it's selling like hotcakes. So if you are in Australia, um, apologies for those dear friends in the rest of the world. Maybe one day we can get it over there. But Australians, if you do like the show, you like what we put together, here's a wine it's a great way to support us um, get it while it's hot really brambly really kind of like blue red um, black fruit kind of thing tannin profile is like gentle acid nondescript but yeah really balanced really good it's a bit thinner than the other two in terms of the mouthfeel which I'm here for as a it's Oh, the tannin profile is like crystalline and quartzy. That's really cool. I'd be happy to pay 40 bucks. I'm gonna say this is Aussie, to be honest. I think it, this feels like an entry-level Barossa thing. So I reckon this might be like a in the, the cheaper end of the spectrum because there's a really there's not too much complexity here. The only real complexity there is like this like lovely tannin profile. I reckon that tastes more expensive than the first one. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna go this is greater than that. All right, so maybe this is the medium range and the other ones were the cheap, but that feels more pricey than the first two. I'll say that that's 68 bucks and I'll have a dozen of that one. Really fun. Wine number two of the second bracket, which is actually wine number four. You're all following this, aren't you? And then wine number four. Again, very stemmy, very lignified. Less confected and more like, yeah, fermented fruit. I don't know what to tell you there. I feel like I've really developed my different sounds I make when I put wine in my mouth now. It used to just be like, now I've got like three different phases I go through. I don't know if these mics are picking it up, but up here it sounds great. I think it's a great wine. I do think that these two wines are on the lower price bracket. I don't believe that. Uh, maybe they could be medium price, but I don't actually, I really don't believe it's worth it. Yeah, I quite like that. I'm gonna go not Oz for the first one and then Oz for the second. Um, but yeah, this, like again, both feel really approachable. Like maybe this one less so because it is generally when I see a lot of stem use, I think more expensive. So I'm just gonna stay true to my guts and say that I'd pay $28 a bottle for that and it's non Aussie. Don't hate my Grenache call, but I don't know, these are getting very light all of a sudden. They, they just don't have the density of flavor, the complexity, finesse of, of acid line, maturation. Things just seem a little bit less. Lousy, you know? Honestly, I'd pay $25 for that second one. I just think it's just too one note. It's just all stems, nothing else. Like it just doesn't have enough like actual flavor to it. It is just a bit disappointing to be honest. So number three is the winner out of that bracket for me. Um, but yeah, just a bit too stemmy. Final round, fight. One number five. Right, so this is reductive. It smells like sulfur. There's a lot of promise on the nose there. Actually, I'll be honest, it actually smells, smells oddly Italian. It smells oddly like, like Slovenian oak. It smells like it has not grown in new world terroir. Not sure about this. Again, very evident use of whole bunch. Tannin profile is beautiful. Tannin profile is gorgeous actually, but I really, there, there is actually some nice fresh fruit underneath it as well. Pretty muted. Oh, it's got a nice little finish on it though. It's got this like, feels like really sort of heavier and flat through the middle. And then there's this nice little just raspberry at the back end, which I quite like, but yeah, wow. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that density, the weight on the palate, the follow through. Yeah, length, length and it's still going and it's still going. Great wine. I don't know what country that comes from. I know I know that is a, a very hard thing to achieve, not just like in this particular variety because bitter culturally, it's a really hard variety to grow. It's this nice little just raspberry at the back end which I quite like but 
I wish it was just there from the start and stayed the whole way through, you know? It's like when your best friend comes to a house party, but they only come late and you're like waiting for them the whole time. And then it turns out you didn't have that good of a time for the first three hours. The last four hours are great, but I just wish that raspberry was there the whole time, you know? Um, when it is beautifully detailed and all that different thing, it's just it's just a little bit too stemmy. But I still grab three bottles. I'm happy to pay 70 bucks for that because I think it is a beautifully elegantly crafted wine, um, but it's just a little bit too brown, a little bit too stemmy. Wine number six, time to confirm all of my assumptions. This is going to be a very clearly cheap Australian Grenache. That's kind of throw me, I'll be honest, because now I'm thinking that those these last three are actually the medium price category and the first two are the high price category. That's what we're talking about. I feel like that's what I've been searching for this entire bracket. Like I've just been looking for the taste of this the whole fucking time. All right. This is my new favorite. I'll have 12, Aussie. Maybe this is my patriotism bias coming through because literally for all of the wines that I've liked more out of the two, I've been like, that's the Aussie. I don't like that color on me, but we'll see if I'm right. That's glorious. Thank the heavens for this wine because honestly, that was pretty harsh going the whole way through, but that is just beauty. It's got this fresh kind of like cherry seed as well. I love that. I absolutely love that. No, I'm gonna stick with this. I just think that uh, perhaps isn't exactly what I would deem to be as worth uh, what it maybe is. Still think it's pricey, but I would only pay 65 bucks a bottle for it and I would buy three bottles. I think it's very good, but uh, at, if we're talking about like high priced Pinot, either this needs to spend a little bit more time in the cellar to really reveal itself, or it just, it just, seems, it just seems like it's missing a degree of rightness, you know, tell our specificity. That's my final conclusion. First bracket, mid price. First one was Australian, second one was Italian. Second bracket, high price. First one was Australian, second one, no idea. And third bracket, low price, but also had my favorite wine in it. So whether you should pay more for wine, I've still got no idea, but we'll find out when we get back together. So let's see what the boys think. Alrighty, gentlemen. Uh, Australia versus the rest of the world in different price brackets. How did we go? Confused. <laughs> Bended my brain. Bended my brain. I did not have fun. So, it was it was rough. I I did not have fun. At the best of times, I struggle to identify one thing about these brackets. Now we're <laughs> we're identifying brack, uh, price brackets, which wine is from which country, and the variety. Yeah, I I, I like the fact that uh, it hadn't it didn't wasn't very clear what the prices were and the price points no, were or anything no. like that, which means it's got to be good how this sort of like play, plays out is going to yeah. be so fascinating for me. Mm. Yeah, I think for me, I was just like, um, you see this kind of color. I walked up here and knowing it's like Australia versus the rest of the world. I was like, oh, it's going to be one of these, these things. And I saw this color, I was like, oh, shit, what color, what could it possibly be? Because it's not going to be Pinot. Um, well, it could be Pinot, but it's just like, you know what? I'm going to go, I, think, I reckon this is Grenache. I think this is a Grenache little thing because we do a lot of that uh, and see what the rest of the world does as well. But where do you guys end up? I, I, I had Pinot. Pinot. Oh, really? I, I went, I went straight to Pinot. Pinot. I thought the too. first one was a ring of Pinot. Could be, I could have just completely blown that whole tasting up. Who knows? So let's talk about this first one. Yeah. I did not like this wine at all. Wow. I, it, it, I it, was, like it was like it. one of my favorite, uh, yeah, favorite wines. I, um, really? Yeah, I thought it was Cracker Pinot and 55 bucks, one at 12. Thought it was just all class and yummy and it's, delicious. It's and reductive and so sour. Reductive? It's stinky. <laughs> On the nose. It's stinky. <laughs> no. No, dude. There's one coming up later that is, but no. I love how this whole thing's just started. <laughs> yeah, it's stinky. Okay, uh, all right. I, I was first to taste. I, yep. I, I do agree it's settled down a little bit, mm. but when I first tasted it, I was not having a great time. Oh dear. Yeah. Oh, sure. So all right. I wanted a glass. Like, oh, right. like I'd be happy to pay a maximum of about thirty bucks retail for that. <gasps> I just thought it was just yeah. I wanted a, I wanted three bottles of it. I thought it was me. I also thought these were all Grenaches, so it's nice to have someone to be wrong with if Let's I'm go. wrong. Um, <laughs> so uh, I went Grenache, and I thought this is the Aussie Grenache of these two, the mid price point, and I thought it was forty four bucks, and I had three bottles. All right. Well, fifty five and twelve. Where are we at? Lucky. Is that uh, mid range? That, I don't know. Well, yeah, we don't know. Like, like, what, what, what is what, this? What's the middle of what? <laughs> yeah, Helen's a piece of work. What's the middle of it? Pinot Noir, goddamn! <laughs> Damn! Oh, I didn't oh. like it. Oh. I didn't like it. Oh, what, actually, 55 and. Where's that crown? At least when I, I want to. I feel I earned that one. I put it's it out behind you. It's on the ground. Yeah, you've done well. Oh, well done calling that Pinot. Um, look. I'm happy that I got the Australian thing. I'm hoping that some of these is gonna be a hundred bucks and this is the mid-range so I can continue my form, but yeah. Yeah, is it mid-range or is this high range? That's we don't know yet, yeah, but we'll I guess out. I guess this bracket is mid-range. That's 11.5% alcohol, that's low. 
for that Pino. Yeah. yeah, that's why the sourness is really bugging me. Yeah. And then number two, a little bit of an improvement. A bit stemmy for me, um, which is a bit of a theme on this whole bracket. There was so much stemmies in all of these wines. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But this one was just a bit stemmy, but a definitely an improvement for the first one. I preferred this wine over the first one. Mm. I was the opposite. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I kind of disagree as well. I had them listed as the exact same, like 344 sort of thing, but I thought that was a much more like, fruity, fun example of the grape. Mm. I thought this just fell a bit flat for me, to be honest. Yeah, I went three three bottles and, and 45. Thought it was, yeah, I'd still drink it. Yeah, well, it wasn't reductive or sour, so I liked this one more. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, two for 35. So how much was that one, Lock? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I don't, oh, know. Dear. I I don't know if this is mid-range. Mid -range. I really don't know. Both mid-range. Mid-range is what, like 45. Oh, my head mid-range is like 45. Oh, $75 burgundy. It's a bargain. That is a bargain. <laughs> Yeah. Producer, I don't, uh, and the fact that it's seventy-five bucks, also under um, screw, uh, screw cap. cap, which is, and not, not this. There's, there's issues with these screw caps, which we can cover in a later video. Still, yeah, sure but um, uh, interesting, very interesting. Uh, didn't peg it as Berg, but That's really great. glad that I'm coming over to Noah's place to enjoy it. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I, I bought two bottles, and I wanted to pay thirty-five bucks. So for seventy-five bucks, I'm not, I'm not. Buying it. <laughs> no, you're not I'd buying like, it. I, to be honest, if I bought a bottle of Burgundy and it tasted like that, I'd be very disappointed. Well. In terms of though the bracket surprising, because we know yeah. one is mid, one's low, and one's high. Where was everyone on this first bracket? I went mid for that one. That I was that mid. was my middle price. Point. I went mid as well. I went mid as well. So time will tell. Yeah. What did you guys go for this second bracket? This is my value bracket. Oh, I went high on this one. I went value as well. I went yeah. value. Okay. I just thought there wasn't enough complexity here for. Um, I, I thought these wines were actually quite good. I, mm. I quite like these wines. They're pretty, pretty approachable, really good. But there just wasn't any complexity, and that's yeah. fine. Um, 100 agree. But um, yeah, good. Uh, and the first one uh, I didn't think was Aussie, but I quite liked it. I was happy with three bottles, three bottles for forty bucks. I think it was pretty good. Pretty fun, just juicy, good tannin profile, like really nice. I, I had one bottle for twenty three. I had a dozen for 68. I actually um, enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed it. I really did. It's coming off the back of these though. Yeah. These that, were like interesting and Yeah, nice and that and, like, just doesn't have the interest. Like I, like, it's yeah. sort of like, I don't know, it feels distorted. It doesn't really kind of yeah. scream at me. Yeah, but sure. I'd rather but, drink that than either of those, which is why I said that. It, yeah, look, I don't know, man. But my, my theories on this are very different to your theories, but I liked it more, so I said it was more expensive. I wanted a dozen of that. I thought it was Aussie, and I'd pay 68 bucks. Lucky? It is the high bracket! I've nailed the brackets. I've got wow. mid. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, in the paper as well. In the paper as well. You know it's wow. fancy than it's in that paper, baby. What do we got here? Oh, Patagonian Fino. We've loved this producer before. We have loved this producer before. But uh, no, unfortunately, not a winner with me today. No, not for me either. Uh, you no, guys that's such a shame. You guys don't understand fan. Patagonian Pinot like I do, I suppose. Evidently not. <laughs> Clearly not. Evidently I was into not. that. I mean, I did call it Aussie, but you know, I'm just scratch past that. Uh, wow. I mean, I, yeah, it's quite nice. I just didn't think there was enough complexity there. But... <laughs> so that means that we're about to drink some like $120 Australian Pinot here. So what is it, like Yari Yearing or some shit? I, like, called it, I called this $28 one bottle. I did not like uh, this. I said $30 and six bottles. I said uh, three bottles and 25. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I did call it Australian though. <laughs> Sorry, whoever is like really big into this. Nah, man, that's lame. Um, how much? It's was... actually quite improved. It's like it's 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 opened up. All of these wines have actually improved. Mm. I thought that but, was just really flat. But it again, it if it's if it's any... anywhere near that kind of price point, it's too much. Yeah. How much is it like? Yeah, oh okay. my well, god! That's pretty near that. Is price this Yarra Yearing? Like that? Fill like it. It. someone like that? Fast Pembroke Hill. Oh yeah. Okay, there you go. Um, flagship. Yeah, just a bit, just a bit ritzy for me. Nope. Real sorry. Just like, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, no. to be honest, look, Pinot Noir is an expensive price bracket, and like, it, it is competition in that bracket. I thought most favorite bracket, but most favorite wine for me was this wine here. I thought it was just awesome. So you guys, you guys must have had this pegged as the most expensive bracket then. Yes. And yep. it was the cheap one. And you yep. said it was the cheap one. And I said it was the cheap one, mate. Well he's done, like, that's fucking he's, impressive. He's teaching us lessons. The world is upside down and pigs are flying. Things, something's <laughs> gone wrong here at this channel. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I thought this had a nice finish but a slow start. I thought it was pretty flat on the front of the palette. It was sort of this, like, oh yeah, it, it, sort of light Syrah or something. And then at the end, this is a little raspberry. I'm oh seeing, yeah. see, I'm seeing this like strawberry seed character, mm. like this like mm. underripe raspberry thing, mm. which is now like you know, I, I noted it in the tasting, and as soon as I tasted, like maybe this is the cheap stuff, and I, I really liked um, this one and the next one because I, these were both my most high price things, but just a little bit too 
This, yeah. this smelled like someone grabbed like Barolo and then took the tannin away and then took some of the colour even further away. Kind of yeah. has this Italian sort yeah. of like, which kind of like, that's why it sold me. Yeah. yeah. But, so I wanted to pay 85 bucks for it and I wanted to buy 12. Did you think it was the Aussie or the non-Aussie? I thought it was non-Aussie. I thought this was non-Aussie as I well. I thought it was non-Aussie as well. So how much was it like? 25? $3. Yummy. Oh, pretty good value. Yummy. Conrad! Conrad. <laughs> <laughs> From Marlborough! That's Sick! Actually, yeah, not bad. Yeah, not wow. Bad. I'd love to know like the, the, the real technicalities as to how they've made that look like that. You know what I mean, is really, really interesting? interesting? Look at the, we've changed the glassware on this bracket and we've mm. put Pinot in it, which needs air and space to like really think. So everything's really closed. I don't know, but yeah, this is I I this pretty this. good. I think this is yeah, very well detailed and excellent like, uh, things like that. Um, it's also really good val value for Tassie, pe uh, not Tassie, bloody New Zealand Pinot. How does this yeah. work with my favorite wine is the cheapest? How does, what's going on? Welcome to what's my going world, baby. On? What's, what's, what's even what? what? Because this was my favorite wine as well. This was my favorite wine as well. And it's the cheap one of the, oh man, I everything's coming was, up trumps. I, the perfume on this one I thought was really lovely. Like it's got this like great like lavendery thing, like mm. really herbal. Mm. And then the palate's like juicy. Mm. And I was looking at this Grenache lens because I didn't really see too much acid across the board. Mm. Um, so I, I thought this was great. I like, I, I didn't have a great bracket here, but this was pretty cool. Ah, this is wine of the lineup for sure. Um, it's going to be cheap. It's going to be Aussie Pinot. That's cool. I really like that. I got a dozen for, and I was going to say 45 bucks, even though I knew it was the cheap one. I was like, this is worth more. When I got to this wine, I was like so confident that this bracket was the expensive bracket after tasting this. Right. And I got to this and I was like, no, nah, it ain't. It ain't. There's mm. something in the back of my head. And actually, to be, to like, just to be absolutely clear, I never actually went to here to then go, maybe that's the high one. I went straight to here. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's amazing. I still would never have considered these to be the, the high bracket stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm fascinated to know what it was. I was willing to pay 65 bucks for it uh, I was, and three bottles. I was 80 bucks and 12. I was 45 and 12. How much? Oh, but that is oh. the cheapest, cheapest one in the bracket. Yeah. It's the cheapest one in the bracket. I'm pretty confident. I'm pretty confident the cheapest one in the bracket is the wine of the lineup. The Foste, the dagger. <laughs> Tim Napstein doing his thing. Oh. Oh my oh, god. What are we doing? What's happened with Pino? What are we doing? What is what I don't even know what's going the on. The industry is gonna gonna cancel us. That's what's gonna happen. Yeah, we we yeah, <laughs> we clearly know nothing about Pinot as an Italian wine producer. <laughs> uh, so you know, take take your word from us what you will. Like, to be perfectly frank, if I was at a bottle shop, I probably wouldn't buy any of these brands. You know, mm -hmm. like I don't I don't see a lot of these brands around. Oh. It's pretty um, cool though. But like, you know, like I, would, I wouldn't buy it based on my knowledge of these particular wines. But I mean, there was some good wines. Like that last one, I really enjoyed. That's, I really enjoyed that's that That's a one. real standout, that last one. Guys, is this what's happening? Is this what's happening? I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, of know. course that's, what, so, what do you mean is it? It's the one that we like the most. It's the cheapest. What, what are we talking about? Of course it is. That slaps. Gra congratulations. Well, Tim. Tim Napstein, just down the road from us. So a little bit of uh, We got some bias. recency bias. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But we didn't know what it was. We it's not know. bias. <laughs> it's not trying to make up things. You got it wrong. This wine's <laughs> excellent. Some things are overpriced. If you find a cheap Pinot, fucking buy it. I, I, that I agree with. That I agree with. If you buy, find a cheap Pinot that you like, buy as much as you can on it because, like, as you can tell, like the mid-price bracket was about sixty dollars. Cheap, so. <laughs> twenty-two bucks down the road, Pinot Noir. That's Those it. are gospel words, right? Yeah, there. I back that. Love I back words. that, mate. Uh, well done. Uh, we'll see you next week. Bye. Fuck <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs>